Alberta's premier and top AHS officials have been presenting their version of the COVID-19 pandemic. But as you see today, nurses are sharing their experiences from Alberta's rural hospitals. Jeanette Roche recently sat down with a nurse we refer to as Carol, who asked that her identity remain hidden. Now, Carol, in your opinion, how dire is this situation? We're hearing so many different accounts. Um, well, we've had a staffing crisis going on for at least a year. It's been building over the last 20 years, really. Um, we used to speak about this when I first graduated, that we had a large demographic of baby boomers that were going to be getting older and older and older. And um, there was discussions of whether we were going to be able to care for them, whether we needed to build facilities, that type of thing. So the average acute uh, unit uh, has waiting placement. They're waiting a higher level of care on their units. It has always been like this. On the unit that I work at, there's between four and 10 people at one time waiting to get into some kind of long-term care setting. So in my opinion, that's the crisis. I'm not seeing a COVID crisis and I never have seen a COVID crisis. Okay, so the staffing situation at your hospital, what's the, what is the reality basically? So we have at least six open positions that we're not able to fill. We have had two beds closed for a year and a half. And um, yesterday we had empty beds. We had eight empty beds. And the week before we had four empty beds. And that is normal. <laughs> so the beds are filled with some waiting placements. Um, most of our patients are vaccinated. There's very few unvaccinated that are in the hospital right now. And I know they've been saying exactly the opposite on the news. And the other thing that is interesting to me is if you get the vaccine, you are considered unvaccinated for two weeks. So if you get the vaccine and you have a vaccine injury that sends you to the hospital, you'll be categorized as unvaccinated. So that is a way to conveniently hide vaccine injuries, in my opinion. That's really interesting what you were mentioning about the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated and how the, un, like we're getting opposite information because, you know, we've been sent information about the number of people recently admitted to a rural Alberta hospital that they only have two positively tested COVID patients, but over half of the patients in the hospital are double vaxxed. So what health issues are you seeing with patients who are actually fully vaccinated? Uh, we're seeing bleeding issues, so strokes and heart attacks. And we also have a lot of patients that have mysteriously very low hemoglobin levels, requiring them to need blood products. And through testing, we're not able to identify any source of bleeding. So the most common source of bleeding for a low hemoglobin would be from the gastrointestinal tract. So these people are getting scoped and they're not able to see any kind of active bleeding going on, but they're coming in with hemoglobins that are very low. Okay, and are you thinking that this is caused by the vaccination? Is that what you're saying necessarily? In my opinion, yes it is. Because when you get the vaccine, you're getting 40 trillion little spike proteins injected into your body. The theory is that it's supposed to stay in the deltoid muscle but what they're actually showing is that these spike proteins are being picked up by the lymphatic system. They're going into the general circulation and circulating in the blood, looking for a place to settle. And that is in the brain and the heart. That is why people are having strokes and heart attacks after the vaccine. Ugh, that's fascinating. So how does this compare to the unvaccinated patients that you are seeing? They're, they, they're not having these issues as well, as well. It's not coincidental. Well, we have an aging population and most people have pre-existing conditions. So in my opinion, what we're seeing in the hospital is just regular patients with their pre-existing conditions. That's what's bringing them to the hospital. It's not COVID. And um, so, we can't be certain whether it was a pre-existing condition or if they were vaccinated, if it was caused by the vaccine, but we have seen some very young strokes, which does seem unusual. And it's also interesting to me that, you know, we're in our fourth wave. 
our hospital and ICU numbers are worse than they've ever been. And 70% of the population is vaccinated. Like this just doesn't make any sense to me. Coming up, part two of our interview with Nurse Carol, who explained why she's refusing to get the jab. Stay with us. Do you want to be able to have access to care? And what would you rather have? An unvaccinated, healthy staff person caring for you or nobody? Welcome back. Nurse Carol is one of almost 50,000 AHS employees who are apparently refusing to receive any COVID-19 vaccines. She explains why in part two of this interview. Uh, have you been able to speak with other in others in your field that are in other hospitals? Are they saying the same thing? Or are you just, uh, this is just facts that you're garnering from your own experience in your own hospital? Um, well, there's two hospitals that are close to me. Um, one has numbers that are about the same. Uh, the other one, I haven't been able to touch base to get numbers from that hospital. Okay. All right. It's so interesting. I find it interesting too, as a nurse from nursing, people who are nurses that I know, they say that in nursing school, you're taught that a vaccine, it takes about three years or so before it's considered safe and approved, but here now we are kind of being told forget right. what, forget there, what there you learned in nursing school. There needs to be some long-term studies. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So okay. yeah, they do long-term studies, which of course have not been done on this experimental gene therapy. Yeah, it's interesting. So, Carol, obviously another issue facing Alberta Health staff is this vaccine mandate. So, in your experience, have you seen AHS workers quit over the threat of mandated vaccines? Uh, I know of one healthcare aide that quit because she was being bullied on her unit. So it very much is the vaccinated against the unvaccinated. Uh, there's two schools of thought and uh, the, the ones that are listening to the mainstream news, I think are getting a lot of disinformation and they're very frightened. So they are very pro-vaccination, even though they can see the numbers in front of them don't make sense they seem to still believe the narrative. That must be very frustrating as a healthcare worker. You yourself um, have not been vaccinated, correct? Correct. Are you worried about losing your job? Yes, I am. I'm expecting it. Well, in, in your opinion, what should AHS be doing? What should they be doing as a path forward? Well, we're already in a staffing crisis, so I don't know how you justify terminating a whole bunch of staff when you're in a staffing crisis. But I, I think that this is really what the plan is, that they're going to terminate a bunch of people, they're gonna to have to close beds, they're gonna to have to close hospitals, and they'll blame it on the unvaccinated. So we have this large demographic that is getting old and needing care. And honestly, I don't think the government wants to provide the care. So if you get rid of a bunch of staff and close a bunch of hospitals, then the, your access to healthcare has been reduced. Yeah. And I think that's what the plan is. They wanted to yeah. cut jobs before the pandemic and they weren't able to, they've actually created jobs with the pandemic. That's another reason for the shortage. They've created um, swabbers and screeners and people giving out the immunizations. So those people have left the hospital to go into those jobs. So that has further created a staffing shortage. But I don't think they're really going to be able to replace staff that they terminate. And I think they know that. I mean, this is going on all over North America. They are terminating staff that won't get the job. And there's nobody to replace them. There's no magical pool of people waiting to come and replace us. They just don't exist. So I guess what I would say to the public is, do you want to be able to have access to care? And what would you rather have? An unvaccinated, healthy staff person caring for you or nobody caring for you? Because that's what the choice is going to be. Yeah, now Carol, how many people that do you know of that are in your situation? I would imagine there's gotta be thousands that are looking at possibly losing their job soon? Well, I, I know of 10 people at my hospital 
that are not taking the, the vaccination, but it's probably higher. People are not talking about it. People are uh, worried about being bullied, I think is why no one's talking about it. And really it's private health information. So staff members should not be asking other staff members if they have the job or don't have the job. The job. And this is kind of what we've come to is we have to disclose our health information to complete strangers. Carol, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. We so appreciate the healthcare workers who've sent us this valuable information and who agreed to share their story on Bridge City News. Coming up, we'll look back at the top Southern Alberta stories for this week. Each and every one of us have been touched by uh, this situation. Um, I've had cousins, I've had uh, uh, nephews and nieces that have been affected by this as well.